Hello there. In this audio extract from my note-taking workshop, Naomi discusses what notes to take when researching for an assignment. If you find this helpful, we have more useful workshop extracts on our YouTube channel, Derby Uni Library, as well as other audio and video content. Um, and this last point is, is what note should I take? So I put this first point in bold because um, it's so important. It just sums up so much of the information on this topic. Note taking should be active and not passive. I put the there were some positive quotes about this and there were some negative quotes about this. I put the positive quote on um, note taking is thinking on paper. So you are thinking as you write notes that is happening on the paper or on the screen um, if you're doing it electronically. But you, it's a way of thinking. Um, I read and there was another quote in one of the books I read that said something like um, to how easy it is to just passively copy out something that you're reading or listening to without actually taking it in or thinking about it at all. Um, I think it was note taking to be a, a, a good distraction from thinking. So you want to make sure that you are doing your thinking in your notes and not using your notes to distract you from thinking. So you might you might feel like you're doing lots of work because you've got lots of notes. But if all you've been doing is just copying word for word what someone's saying, then that might not be a useful thing to do, particularly if you've got a record of that in some other way, as we talked about earlier. You need to make sure that you are thinking as you take notes. And the second quote, again, I, you can tell I really enjoyed reading it. This book on minute taking, and again, this highlights the point that this is a skill that will apply throughout your studies and beyond. The essential skill is not the ability to write fast, the ability to recognize what someone is talking about and identify the message. And that's really key. You're not trying to write down everything that's being said um, or everything that you've read. The skill is in recognizing the key point and the message that's coming across and then adding your own thoughts and opinions onto that. So don't use note, note taking to, to fool yourself that you're working hard when actually your brain switched off and you're just mindlessly taking notes. You need to be thinking as you do it. So here we go, rather copy out whole sections of text. So if this is if you're reading, rather than copying out whole sections of text word for word, think about what point is being made. And also, if you can, start to include your own thoughts and opinions. And that will help you form your arguments as you go into your assessments. I've got an example coming up about how you might organise that on a page. So we'll look at that in a second. But this is really, really key. So make notes on the point that's being made, not necessarily the words that are being used, whether that's spoken or whether you're reading it. Make a note on the point that's being made and then add in your own thoughts and opinions to that. So you can do that by highlighting key themes that you've spotted. Uh, you can include your own opinions. You can note contrasting opinions. You can Build links maybe between different things that you're reading in your notes. So if you read one article and then the next article that makes um, that argues one point and then you the next article you read argues a different point or makes a different argument, you can do that linking. So you can note that in your notes. Uh, this is this is different to this article I read previously. You could go back to the notes that you read previously and say this is different to this article I've just read. Put that information into your notes and that will really help you when you're pulling together your assignment. So whether that's when you're building up a structure for an essay or whether that's when you're preparing for an exam and you're going in to, to make your arguments in exam format. It will really help you to organise your thoughts and build up your assignment plans. And this final point, I should have put this at the beginning, in the middle and at the end. I almost but repeated it twice on the slide, but it didn't quite fit. And I decided that was a bit OTT. But when you're taking notes, always include bibliographic details that you will need for a full citation and reference, including your page numbers if you're going to. So this applies to anything that you, there's even the smallest possibility you might cite in an assignment, um, particularly if you're writing an, an essay or that kind of assignment, but also if you're doing exams that require citations, um, then you will need that as well. So two benefits to this. It means when you are coming to write your reference list or your bibliography, you have all the information to hand. Um, some of you might already have experienced the, the feeling of using a source in your assignment. 
going to reference it, going to put your citation in, and you've not got the details. It's so frustrating. Um, so having those details to hand will really help you out there. And also, it will mean that you can get back to that information if you need to check something over or if you think you've missed something or you need to go back to it. Having the full bibliographic details will help you do that. And that applies to lecture seminars, those kinds of note taking as well. Make a note of the lecture. We had that format earlier that included the date. Make a note of the date the lecture is taking place. Make a note of the topic that it was on. Um, so if you've got a recording, you can easily get back to that recording. So if you've got lecture slides, you can easily get back to those lecture slides if you want to check them. Um, I have yet to do, we do citing and referencing workshops in the library and we collaborate with lots of different colleagues when we do those. I have yet to do a citing and referencing session with a colleague who hasn't experienced as a student the writing of a reference list and finding they've not written down the full information. My worst, I used to be fairly good at it, fairly good at writing down the full bibliographic information. But it was those times when I thought, oh, actually, this is, I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use this. I can't be bothered to write down the full information. I'm just going to put it to one side. And then you get back and then as your ideas develop, suddenly you realise this was the key, the key point and you've not got a reference. Um, so either then you I would have no idea at all what it was to how to get back to it, or I would have very few details that I would be suddenly all my detective skills were coming in to find out whatever book or journal it was that I was reading. So this is my key piece of advice, really. Um, if you're taking note, include that full information you will need. Um, if it's a lecture, something that you're not particularly likely to cite or reference, then include the information you need to get back to any records that you have of it or any information you have. If it's a journal article or a book, if there's even the slightest chance that you might use it in your assignment, then take that time to include the full bibliographic details. I expect there's lots of these lovely apps that will beautifully link into um, databases and or you can take a photo and upload the, the details. Anything that makes it quicker is, is a good thing. But however you record it, make sure you've got that information. In fact, you could just use the, if you've got a camera on your phone, you could just use the camera on your phone to take a photo of the front cover and the bibliographic details page and then just keep a folder of them, maybe. But make sure you've got it somewhere. So this is then another example of a layout that facilitates those points we've just been talking about. So this is, again, it's an example, it's a suggestion, it's something to think about, um, particularly if you are using pen and paper to write notes, but you could also do something electronic that, that follow this kind of format. But this is kind of how I would organise my notes as a student. I can't claim to have actually done it fully like this, but this is based this is an example based on what I used to do as a student, um, given all the things that I've read in preparation for this workshop. So full bibliographic information at the top. I definitely used to try and do that before I wrote anything, really. I would write the full bibliographic information so I knew I could get back to it. Bullet list of points. So the, as I said, I love a, I love a bullet point. Um, so make my points in the middle here. There's a lot of space for that. On the right hand side, then, some separate space to put my thoughts. So allowing that separate space in your layout will give you space to write it. And particularly if a thought comes back to you later, someone said about this earlier, leaving space, if um, if you, you've missed something in your notes. But leaving space, the thoughts to develop can be really helpful because they might not develop. It might be that your thought about point one only comes to you when you are think when you're reading point three. Um, so leaving space is good and also Leaving that space prompts you to, to write those thoughts down. So if you're looking at your um, notes and this middle section is completely filled in, but the right hand section is completely blank, that might prompt you to note down some of your thoughts. And then on the left hand side, this I can say hand on heart, I did do. Um, I used to use the margin. So I used to use lined paper with a margin. And in the margin, I would always write the page number that was relevant to the point that I would need for citing and referencing. So depending on what referencing system you use, you might need a page number or you generally will need a page number if you're doing a quote. You might need a page number if the point that's being made is specific to that page. So always worth writing down page numbers as you go as well. That was Naomi during one of our live note taking workshops. If you want to attend one of these workshops live, go to the University of Derby's library website www library.derby.ac.uk and scroll down until you see a link to our workshop calendar. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.